Festival of Brass Performance. The centrepiece of our programme is Eden by John Pickard. So today I've come down to Bristol to the university where John is Professor of Music and we're here at the Victoria Rooms to meet the composer. Okay, thank you very much for your time today, John. And we're really enjoying rehearsing Eden at the moment. Can you tell us a little bit about the piece? Yeah, um, I wrote the piece in 2005. It was written for the um, finals of the National Brass Band Championship. And I thought very hard. This was my first and so far only test piece. And I had to think rather carefully about how I was going to going to approach it because I'm well aware of the um, the history of test pieces. Obviously, there are certain things that you have to do in a work of this kind to ensure that there are challenges to the band, musical and technical ones, challenges of individual virtuosity and ensemble virtuosity. But I wanted to do more than that. I didn't want to write a piece that was just a series of technical challenges, you know, sort of ticking boxes as mm. you as you went along. I wanted to do something where the the technical demands came from a musical motivation. There is a tradition of writing pieces that have some sort of narrative to them that's a kind of a draws some sort of moral, if you like. Mm -hmm. Often with a, a religious undertone to it. So I started thinking about the Eden story and it was around the time that I went to visit the Eden project in, um, in, in Cornwall, two ideas began to come together mm -hmm. for me. And I'd also been reading Paradise Lost of Milton and there's a, there are some wonderful lines right at the end where he talks about Adam and Eve expelled from the Garden of Eden. Um, and walking out alone into the world. So that's really where the uh, wh where the whole thing came from. There are there are quite a lot of layers to the piece. At one at one level, there's a simple story attached uh, to the extent that I've assigned almost like an like an opera um, characters to individual players, so that. Um, Adam can be represented by a solo euphonium, Eve by, um, by a cornet, um, and uh, it doesn't have to be a female player, uh, and the, 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 the serpent, the tree of knowledge by the, the trombone. That's where that aspect came from. In terms of the overall structure of the piece, the idea of innocence that is then lost uh, leads to catastrophe, and then some sense of regaining something of what was lost, but uh, but always in um, in a, in a, a slightly different way. It's, it's it's compromised in some way. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't end in the same key that it began in, and that's actually quite important to me uh, that you can't quite regain the, uh, the 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 opening tonality. But there was another aspect to this because I figured that sitting there in the Albert Hall listening to 20 bands playing this piece, if, if it starts and ends in the same key, it gets very, very wearing. So obviously the effect of uh, a performance finishing and then starting again in a, a, a tone higher than it finishes, that would, um, that, that, that would be quite a satisfying thing to do. And how did the bands fare generally with your music, did you think, on that occasion? It varied enormously. I mean, the, you know, everybody gave it their all. There was no, no question uh, about that. The piece really is a struggle. I mean, anybody who's ever played it knows that. But the struggle is actually part of the piece. It's, in, it's what the piece is, is about. It's got to have this sense of, uh, you know, kind of an all or nothing. 
quality. The moment you lose that urgency, then the drama begins to begins to sag. Yeah, I can fully relate to that. <laughs> it, uh, the music's got uh, a, a quite an extended mi middle passage, the chaos passage, which uh, which is a real tour de force and is uh, really puts all the players and the conductor through the mill. And I can always remember the palpable sense of relief that I, as the conductor and the players, get at the end of that section, even though there's still about five minutes of music to go. That, but that's the point that really separates the bands for me because having done that really difficult strenuous stuff you then have to play beautifully and quietly yeah. and for me that is the biggest challenge because very often the, the tonal quality and the focus goes at that point. Yes I think that's absolutely right because there is almost a sense of we've done the most difficult technical part even though the next bit's technically not so difficult, I think it really does get to the heart of the piece, doesn't it? The lament section, which, yeah. as you say, builds in confidence towards the end. And also, they're long phrases, mm. and they're demanding on the stamina. The intervals are often very wide. They're quite, uh, they're, they're quite awkward uh, intervals. So it's at moments like that that bands can actually fail. Yeah, I agree. We'll be trying our hardest to get through moments like that in our performance. I'm sure you'll do a fantastic job. John, thank you very much indeed. You're welcome.